Hello and welcome to Wendy's Workshop. Today we're going to be taking a look at brusho inks on fabric. Uh, some of the brusho inks that I'm using are actually um, over 10 years old. I've um, had them for a long time but they last absolutely forever and uh, mostly they're going to be used on paper but today we're going to be having a look at using brusho inks on fabric and um, I'll explain that as we go along. But um, how we use it on fabric to make it permanent is that we're going to use it via a fabric medium. This particular one is actually made by Scholar but there are other makes that are available. So what is brusho ink? It's actually a powder and the powder form is um, like an ink or some people refer to it as a watercolour. And if I sprinkle a little bit onto paper you should be able to see that it's a, a granular effect, just like little grains of, of tiny, tiny sand. And when it's dry, then it's really easy to be able to manipulate around and to uh, keep fairly clean. But once it's wet, then it actually dilutes and it lasts forever. It really does go far. So let's just make a start on this. So these are just um, pieces of cotton that I've cut out literally from sheeting. There's nothing more than uh, just white sheeting that's there. And I'm just going to start by using a bowl and just add a little bit of water into the bowl. Reason being is that I'm wanting to be able to, to make my fabric wet. So just start by making it wet, wringing it out. A little bit of that ink has actually already started spreading off my fingers. I didn't clean my fingers first, so I have to be a little bit careful. But as I, I lay the, the sheet out, the cotton sheet out, that's now damp. And if I just use a little tiny bit of the brusho, you can see that on the surface I've made a hole. And this is why I use it more as a pepper shaker. So as I turn it upside down and I just begin to shake, then you'll be able to see the colours spread straight away. So you can see on the cotton where it's damp and I have just sprinkled on the brusho inks. Where it's wetter, the ink has actually begun to spread through the fibres and that where it's drier, the ink kind of stays in little dots. Here I'm holding just a, a little spritzer that's full of water. But what I wanted to show you is what happens is when you actually begin to spray water over the surface of where you've put the ink and how it begins to expand out. Also, this particular ink was just one colour, but as you look at it, then you can see that the ink actually transfers into different colours as it picks up the different pigments within the actual powder. Another sheet of white sheeting and the bowl of water again. But this time, into the bowl of water, I'm actually going to be able to pour uh, or squeeze some fabric medium. Um, it's a lot thicker than water so that you can see it's actually not mixing at the moment but I just use a, a brush just to be able to, to, to mix that around. Fabric medium is amazing stuff. Um, it lets you use any pigment that you want that will then become permanent on fabric. So you can use it alongside watercolour pencils, which I do quite often. You could use it alongside different sorts of inks. And it's, it's a, a fascinating acrylic paints you can use this with. Any sort of paints, really. But once I've mixed it together, then again, I'm actually just going to put the fabric into that and let it soak. I want this one to saturate through. And as opposed to the first one, which was just using water, this one means that the fabric is actually then going to allow the inks to become permanent after you wind them. You've got to wind it, by the way. So put that one to one side for a moment. Lay out the fabric that I've got that is now soaking. 
Firstly, I'm going to show you the, the same technique again, so you can see perhaps the difference. Uh, wipe my hands. I'm going to show you a little bit of black. Um, the black is quite interesting because it colour splits. I don't know if you've ever done ice dyeing, but if you've ever done ice dyeing and you use black colour, then the black splits into its components and there's purples and blues and reds and all sorts in there. So this time I'm just putting a little bit of a little bit of black in the centre. And as I put the black in the centre, then it will get taken up and it will just start to spread. As you're watching that, you can probably just see it begin to change as it starts to spread and starts to dissolve across the fabric. And you can begin to manipulate that in many, many different ways. So once it's on the fabric, I can leave it as it is. If I'm wanting to manipulate it, I could use a paintbrush and I can actually move it around. So here, just to be able to give you a demonstration, I'm just actually moving that around to be able to, to create a, a swirl where I'm picking up the pigment and then putting it back down again. You can see how I've just created the beginning of a swirl. Or again, the same as the previous picture, if I'm wanting to, then I can use water. It doesn't matter if I'm using water on the surface of this because the, the, it's the material that's impregnated. And as I've used the water, then actually there's more water saturated in there. So you can begin to see the pigment running down the material. So you can bleed it from one area to another. And the more water, then the denser the colour is going to be. But you can also blot it. So if I just take a, a piece of um, tissue, excuse the colour of this tissue, it's what I was using earlier to wipe up the surface. But if I use just an ordinary tissue and I put it in the centre and then lift it up, then I don't know how well you can actually see that on the camera. But I want to take up the the, the um, colour of the ink so that I'm leaving a uh, yeah it's not very good on the camera but I'm I'm leaving a, a slightly lighter area in the centre. Okay, so so the techniques that we've just used are actually ones where you can just use the pigment down onto the wet surface and let the wet surface actually take the ink or you can spritz it to make it run down the surface or to be able to spread more or you can use a brush to start to manipulate that and take it wherever you want it to be um, to, to create a beginning of a, an image from the surface. Going back to working with the brush, I want to be able to show you how you can change the shape of this, but just in some places and leave other places. So, for instance, if I'm wanting to create um, a, a graduated sky, then I can just take some of that ink further up onto the paper, but I can leave some of the white of the material just to be able to to show you a kind of like a, a skyline and some clouds but if i wanted to to leave some of that blue and as speckles then you can leave it as speckles as well um here i'm wanting to create the edge of a hill so i will use this to be able to create an edge of a hill um, again, bear with me, I'm just going to rinse my brush and to pick up some of the brown from the bottom and then bring that further up onto the hill so that I've got that colour that is starting to, to run down the surface of the hill and then bring it across with some of that green as well. 
again you can leave some of this mottled or you can begin to create the beginning of a, of a landscape so that it has a, a, a combination of different styles that you're working with but the ability of being able to manipulate and move it around remains whilst the fabric is actually still wet um, once it's dried it depends on whether you have used the fabric medium to be able to dilute it or whether you have used the water to dilute it and the next thing i want to show you is actually begin to show you how you can utilize um, water to be able to reshape after you have finished an image so this was the piece that we did earlier on um, and that I have semi-dried it with a hairdryer just to be able to carry on working with it and I've got an empty bowl and I'm placing the fabric over the surface of this the reason being is that I don't actually want the water to be able to run onto the plastic when I'm doing the next technique that I'm showing you so um, the first technique that I'm using is just actually to use ordinary conventional water uh, which I have put into a dropper so if I just drop some in you just be able to see that's just ordinary water that I'm dropping but if I put a drop onto the surface of the cloth then what happens is that the ink will spread out from the surface and will begin to create a secondary image for you so if you're wanting to have something that you can do free machine embroidery into and create kind of like a simple flower effect then just by putting on a few drops of water and actually just watching that there's a bubble in there excuse my finger if you just watch that you can begin to see how you can re-manipulate the ink on the surface um, so before you wind it after it becomes permanent once you wind it if you if you've used the um, um, fabric medium uh, another thing that you can do as well is to be able to consider taking away color altogether so this is just the top of a mustard jar just for the sake of being able to um, uh, use a container of some description and I'm using bleach uh, just cheap ordinary bleach this lot came from Aldi's but you can buy it wherever you want and by adding a little bit of bleach to water literally that's possibly even too much you, you the, the less bleach that you have the more subtle the effects there is a warning that comes here when you're using bleach please please only use a very old brush and wash it um, immediately after using it um, otherwise you're going to lose your bristles so having been able to put bleach on there if I hold the material up so that you can actually see it while I'm working with it or bring it nearer the camera so that you can see this time I'm just using the brush to be able to take away the colour and the colour will fade out from the surface of where you've taken it. So if I just did a series of very very simple dots rather than actually painting an image um, you can begin to see how the colour will be taken away from the surface and that you can actually begin to play with it but around the outside of it you'll get this darker effect where you've been pushing the ink away from it so a combination between using bleach and water or just using water entirely whatever you want to do and the other thing I'm just going to wash my brush thoroughly again like I said um, the other thing that's quite interesting that you can do and you can do it on two pieces of work that you've actually already started is by thinking about where you might want to be able to create effects by just using a tiny bit of brush o ink now instead of shaking it what I'm doing now is to use a, a, a dry brush 
and just to be able to take a tiny tiny bit of ink which is is really hardly anything at all put that where you want it again i'm just going to wash my brush out because actually that will have taken the ink in and i just want to wash it before i forget and this time again with water and the dropper let's see if i can move that across so that you can you can see it with the water and the dropper i'm just going to literally drop a bit of water on top of where i have put the ink and where i put the ink in the center i'll put a little bit more water on so you can actually see that doing its job it will do the same as the previous one it takes the color away but it also spreads the center ink out so that you can create a, a center part to a flower or you can begin to create petals so you can add ink in and create different shapes with it you can take it away or you can manipulate it as well and on the same piece of fabric i'm just going to to show you um how um, how to be able to do that let's use a, a nice um actually a different i need a contrasting color uh, i use a purple in this instance so what I'm using with the purple, again, I'm going for a different a different brush, a, a dry brush, and I'll do it from the top here. So with the brush, I'm actually just adding effectively what amounts to a row. So I'm just doing a tiny little row of granules. And once I've done that, having washed my brush, put that out to let that dry. Again, I'm going to work with the um, dropper just to be able to manipulate it, put some drops on. But as I'm doing it, I'm going to tilt the material and I'm working from above rather than on the actual ink itself. So I'm adding water onto the, uh, onto the fabric but above where I've just added that ink. And you can begin to see how that will start to run down the fabric. That bit of fabric there is not wet. I'll just give that a little bit of wet. And so you can, can see how that begins to run. Now, if you're doing, say for instance, if you're doing um, a bushes or you're doing a fire or you're wanting to create a tree line, then if I turn that the other way around now and hold it up, you can see how that has started to manipulate and run. Backgrounds for being able to do stitch work onto fabric. And it could be that you're using them for pitch quilts. It could be that you're actually wanting to create something from the images that you get or um for instance this one i've actually done to begin to create some poppy work this is just the background and then i shall stitch into it i hope that's given you some ideas to play with have fun and enjoy it and uh, feel free to keep on looking there'll be more videos shortly our website is www.artswithapurpose.co.uk many thanks